One of the most important things when you're in the field shooting the night sky is making sure that you're completely in infinity focus so your stars are sharp. That's led me to one big surprise in the field when it comes to Nikon Z series camera users is that they don't know the easiest way to find infinity focus on a star when they're out shooting the night sky. Hello everybody, I'm Will Cheney. I've had people between Instagram, YouTube, and even out in the field shocked whenever I share this tip with them about how to find infinity focus with their Z-series camera and lens. In this video, I'm going to walk you through it, as well as also show you how I find infinity focus whenever I'm using a non-Z-series lens with my Nikon Z6. So first off, let's walk through finding infinity focus with a Z-series camera paired with a Z-series lens. So the really interesting fact with the Z-series camera, when paired with a Z-series lens, as soon as you turn the camera on, as long as you're in autofocus, it will immediately go to an infinity focus setting. That's it. It's really that easy. If you tried those steps and it didn't work, uh, most likely it's because of a setting that's in your menu. So what you're going to want to do is head to your menu, and then you're going to make sure that you're in the setup options, and you're going to scroll down until you find one that's called safe focus position. And you want to make sure that this is in the off position. Uh, because if you leave this on, what's going to happen is whenever you turn your camera off and then back on, it's going to actually hold the last focus position that you had it set to. Uh, so make sure this is off. Um, this was a new function that came out in uh, some of the latest uh, firmware back earlier in 2021. So just make sure that's off. A lot of people I think are surprised to hear this because of with other camera systems or maybe even their older Nikons, that you have to go through a little bit of pain to get infinity focus set to get those perfectly sharp stars. This option really comes in handy when you're out in the field, especially when you're doing focus stacking, when you're trying to blend a blue hour photo uh, with your night sky, or you're just trying to get those multiple different exposures you know, on a foreground subject. And it gives you a really easy way to change subjects quickly and always make sure that your stars are in focus without a lot of pain. Let's say you've been out shooting and you've focused on your foreground and your camera's on and you're ready to get into infinity focus for the stars. All you gotta do is turn your camera off, turn it back on, and you're ready to go. Super simple. The other thing I like to do after getting set on my infinity focus, so I usually put it into manual focus after that. And what that prevents is me hitting the back button focus and screwing up my infinity focus that I've got set. Now I know that sounds really easy uh, and I think you know, it even surprised me whenever I learned it, but I've used it a lot in the field uh, and I can vouch for it. So the next one that I promised that I'd talk about is shooting with another lens that's not a Z-series lens. So whether you're shooting with a Sigma lens, maybe you're using an old Nikon F-mount. Um, and honestly, this can work with pretty much any camera that you can pull up a display on the back of it uh, to do, you know, to look at a live view of what you're looking at. Uh, so the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to turn your camera on, obviously, uh, and you're going to want to set it in manual focus. So once you've got manual focus set, you're going to point your camera up to a star and or maybe even a planet. Uh, right now I like to use Jupiter or Saturn, just depending on what time I'm out shooting. And you're going to pull up on your LCD back screen and you're going to want to zoom in using the little magnifying glasses. Uh, and what that's going to do is it's going to zoom in just digitally. Um, and you're going to zoom in onto one of those objects. And once you've got it zoomed in at 100%, you're going to then start to adjust your, man your manual focusing ring. Uh, what I normally do is I'll start spinning it one direction and wait to see if the object's getting larger or smaller. What you're looking for is the object to get as small as possible. As you start moving to that small point, you'll eventually hit a point where the object becomes larger again. Once that happens, you're gonna dial it back a little bit to get it completely dialed in and as small as possible. So it takes a little bit of trial and error, but uh, you'll eventually get there and you'll end up being pretty quick at doing this when you're out in the field. Uh, but it does take a little bit of time to get used to and it's just one more step to have to deal with. Uh, once you do that, uh, you're all ready to shoot. I use this method a lot, uh, especially when I'm at home and I'm trying to just take some interesting photos of whether it's the moon or some deep space objects in my backyard. And I use that with a Sigma 150 to 600. So you can do it, it's definitely doable. Uh, just like I said, maybe it takes a little bit more time, but it's not that bad. So at this point, you've got two options for getting your infinity focus and getting your super sharp stars whenever you go out to shoot the night sky. 
If you like this video, I've been starting to post some tutorials over on TikTok and Instagram. I'd really appreciate it if you'd go over and check those out. And also, if you like this video, be sure to subscribe and hit the little bell and the like button uh, so that you can make sure that you always get notifications whenever I put new videos out. Again, hope this helped everybody and hope you learned something new. Thanks again for watching.